Alright, just setting up the server to play a little bit of Ascension Tactics this morning. That should be the details I told him. Let's get the correct load. That's the old tactics, not legacy demo. There we go. And then uh, I'm going to need to pick a color. I will choose yellow today. I did blue in my last video, so I'll do yellow this time. And I should also join the audio channel. live. That stuff is good. That stuff is good. Should be good to go. Alright, so yellow team. I have a 3, a 5, a 3, and a 7 powered champion. My healths are 8, 4, 3, and 7, so I've got a little mix of everything there. I've got two of them that require two to command my mechanos i've got three on a shadow caster and four on the bringer the bringer is very expensive but he does a lot of powerful things on the other side here we have a runic lightning throw he gets more powerful if you play life bound he's very cheap to command has a decent amount of defense a very solid little guy we've got the ashkara of fate four power five defense only two and if you play an enlightened card you can move him around all whippy wappy then we've got the Arhat Templar that allows you to command other things by slaying and has 9 power. That's really the core of that army over there. And then you've got the Flytrap Witch. If you've played a lifebound card, it gets ranged. It's a 6 and 6, so it's a solid amount of things. And when you defeat a champion, you draw a card. So I've got a grand total of two guys that can defend against the Flytrap without boosting it. But there are plenty of ways to boost. Sorry, sorry, can you hear me? I think I missed the first part of that. I can hear you, and I was just narrating for the stream that went live. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Um, the, uh, the, the password to the server is? Tactics, all lowercase. Tactics. Okay. Uh, I need to find out where I can load these objects. These are kind of cool little void things. In fact, I might just hit save object on that for later. I have no idea where the guy who put those on there got them from. I haven't looked around in the object tree a whole bunch, but those are cool. All right. So you're in, your set is blue, start game. So I'm, I'm first, I don't know, I'm Yes, blue player gets to go first. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the center row. We have a Void Drift Stalker, which has this new ambush ability, which is basically a when you buy command. Some of them are effectively like in power was in Gift of the Elements, other ones are just completely new. Command a champion a second time, but you still have to pay. Two power and one additional for each void, solid on a four cost. Rocket Courier, constructs in this game attach to your champion, so you just kind of drop them beneath it and hit U to put it underneath so you boost their power, defense, and mobility. Snapdragon, when you uh, play it, you get to acquire a hero for free, so that five cost guy is pretty spectacular actually. Land Talker, if you acquire or have acquired a lifebound this turn, your champions are all plus two power. 
Iron Elemental, Command Occultist for free when you buy it, and every time you play it, you Command Occultist for free, and it's a little bit cheaper Mystic. Uh, Verdant Elemental, you Command Occultist for free this turn, and Command when you buy it. It's the same thing as the uh, Iron Elemental, but it's a Heavy instead of a Mystic, basically. Both of them being out there offers the opportunity to just spam some Cultists on the board by putting them out right away. All right. Does your uh, button show the play all on the right side of it? Yep. And I guess there's no, there's no trash and stuff. I don't have to worry about playing something. Yep. And in general, what most of us have been doing is even if we do have timing specific things, we just hit play all and then announce when we're activating it and assume everything's in your hand until you use it. But it makes the cleanup never break if you use play all. Right. Fair enough. Um, I, I guess I've got what. A total of four command to spend? Which Correct. Banner? Four power to command stuff. Because this banner gives you two every turn. One, two, three. Very nice. Uh, and then I get to my... Mascara of Fate and play. One, two, three away. And what's all I want from the center row? Well, you're looking at the second half with three to spend. Yeah. <laughs> you can spam a whole bunch of cultists on the board now and later if you buy both the two and one guy. Or you can That's go true. for a little bit longer, get this land talker that uh, fits with your flytrap witch becoming ranged and with your lycanthrope getting plus five power. Yeah. Those are both good cards to have for that setup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I'll do that. I should take the uh, land talker. And that is. Mean come on, I guess. Alright. Hit that in turn button. Very nice. Alright. I will hit play all, and you'll notice I have a heavy infantry in my first hand because the shadow caster specifically replaces a militia in my deck with a heavy during setup. And since I'm the second player, I get an extra two power just on the first turn. So I have seven power to work with this turn. And I'm going to go for the coordinated assault of all the stuff. So I'm going to take this Verdant Elemental with one of my runes. That'll let me command a cultist. So I'm going to send a cultist, one, two, three, to the right here. And, ooh, fairy commander. Command a champion for free, lifebound champions get plus five. Champions are not slowed by forest, is particularly nice. I have a feeling I know what you're doing with your next five split. I think, I think, I, I think I'll, I'll forget that one out. And then Iron Elemental, I'm going to do this cultist spam thing myself. So I get to put another cultist back out on the board. This particular one I will have run straight up the other side. And those were my two acquire effects. Then I have seven power to spend. And I want to use both my Hadron and my Initiate. So the Hadron Smithy is going to chart straight up the center. My Mecha Initiate is going to charge... I think also straight up the center, one, two, three, and then with my remaining three power, I'm going to get my shadow caster on the board, and I've logged myself up here, but I'll have him go to the left. Then I will end my turn, back to you, and I'm never again going to see that bonus two power. I like everything out there that's achievable with five, honestly, but it would probably come down to Snapdragon or Fairy. Fairy is just specifically spectacular for your setup. The Snapdragon, now that Master Darth is on the field, is potentially... Actually, he's not a hero, he's a champion, so never mind, the Snapdragon doesn't acquire Dartha. 
right, and I would I would to play it in any in any event, so it would be in my shuffle, not not an ambush. Yep. Um, I suppose it makes sense to give it to free to bring out a trap, which is a lot less. Well, either that or make a rush towards the center to try to get one point with one of your guys that are already in the thing. Get, but the fly I trap's two. pretty spectacular for your setup. Yeah, and I guess I, I have I have two anyway. Um, oh yeah, you're right. You'll be able to move that one I'll anyway. Move. Yeah, so I think I'll move. I'll move. Uh, so the, the, the ambush effect counts as playing, or is it? Uh... The ambush effect is you get that thing right away. It's still commanding it, so you can't use it twice in a turn or whatever. But uh... when it when it says if you have played the left hand this turn, the body, the, the ambush is not playing as well. Yes, it would not count for the flytrap being ranged, because you have not played it this turn. You just get to command it for free, but no allegiance has been struck until in your future turns, because you now have two life bounds in your deck. I'll move the center point, which I will bring out and in. Somewhere else, I'm somewhat intimidated by the overkill. I should have called the fly track, which is into the. It's a reasonably good feature, I suppose, so. Yep, it sure is. So I think that is to be done. Yeah, here we go. Alrighty. So, play all. Unsurprisingly, I also have a 5-2 split, because that's how our hands just happen to go. And, honestly, everything I can afford, I like. I like the Void Drift, but I can't use his Ambush right now. The Rocket Courier, that extra mobility is worth more than I can possibly say out loud. The Snapdragon can potentially do amazing things with its free Acquire, and that extra defense is spectacularly effective. Innovative Aspirant, if I buy something with four, I'll be able to pick up a thing that helps my equipped things and my Hadron Smithian Initiate already, or these Mechana things that want me to do Mechana stuff. Dragon's Eye has a Slay effect and is just a bit of everything in the world. I am going to go with the Rocket Courier, because I really do value that mobility more than anything else in this game. And with my one more, since I have equipped things, my Innovative Aspirant, I'm going to click that too. Then with my two power to spend, I am going to double check what Runic Lycanthrope's power is like. It's three or eight, because you're almost certainly going to have a life bound. And I don't have anyone that can survive that. So getting up in his face potentially just means I get bumped back down real quick. If I don't move forward, though, it means I can't threaten it at all. So, what I am going to do is command this pathetic little cultist and go pick up a treasure. So I'm just going to put that treasure in my hand and then flip it around so I know what I've got. And I'll play that at some point during the game. Alright, and in turn, back to you. Again, have the five apprentice hands. Uh, 
We've got all sorts of cool stuff available out there. Yeah. For one of the first times ever, I'd actually not buy the aesthetic at this point in the game. Draw two cards is so great, but everything else out here is uh, do awesome stuff quickly. So there's, so there's been no uh, trash effects yet in the game, which I guess are they... Oh, sorry, we've got, the, we've got the Void Hero now. Yeah, we've got the Shade of the Black Watch that every time you play it, you can trash a card in your hand or discard pile. And that's the first one we've seen. Thinning the deck is pretty important in all deck builders. This one tends to play a little bit quick so that it doesn't always pay off as much as you'd like it to. But yeah, if it stays you even... Have, you want to have trash effects early or you tend to ignore them? Pretty much. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to keep with my policy of... Uh, Life pounds. Snapdragon. And then my two commands, what am I going to do? My my action. What can I do? Well I can throw these scoring points at the moment. Um although matter of fantasy is on the star of fate and maybe I'll go and pick up a visual with the solid we go uh, it's instead to pick up the treasure Press up, one on it, it'll draw one of those <laughs> objects to you. If it had been a stack, that would still work. But that's still the easiest way to draw it in TTS. And then you'll have to hit F to flip it over and find out what you ended up with. Okay. Alrighty. So... I'm just going to hit play all and resolve them in the order of my choosing. So I've got five to spend. I've got a command occultist for free, and I have four power. So what I'm going to do with that is I think I am going to use the free command on this cultist over here move him up there i'll get him into point and be closer to some te treasure grabbing i am going to spend my five on a dragon's eye and since the thicket familiar is super good for you i will grab the thicket familiar <laughs> You are getting way too many lifebound cards, and that's not fixing my issues here. Um, all right, then I have four power left to spend. So I'm going to command this cultist to take two steps. Note I could have done three, but that would put him in range of the Askara of Fate, just beating him down on its way to the shrine. So I'm going to be just slightly further away, and then I'm going to use either the Initiate or the Smithy and I think I'm going to use the initiate to go this way two steps or just one step. I want to be just one step so that if you come up and smack me you're walking out of the shrine in the process. But then it still puts me in range of the shrine and it puts me in range of a treasure so I have some options on my next turn and that's all I will do. I feel like a lot of new players in this game use max movement every single time. It's actually kind of important to sometimes go a little bit less than that. <laughs> Alright, well you definitely got your lifebound effects set up. And you can yeah. walk through forest with a single point of movement. That's also pretty spectacular. Okay, I can also... Let's see... 
can also boost the power of your guys universally if you buy the other land talker. Yeah. Three, four, five, six. You also have everything you need to acquire Master Dartha. And I want to point out that every champion that's in the center row is spectacular. Because Master Dartha, you use every turn for free, and when you buy him, you command something for free. I was, uh, so I could, I could buy for this turn Dartha then, so I wouldn't. I think I only, I only have six to spend, do Yep, you've got six. Um, so Master Darth would mean I'm not buying the... It would mean you're not boosting the power of your champions, but I don't think anyone can get to me in movement anyway. Uh, oh, you're right. And he could kill him outright anyway, because he already got a plus five just from playing a lifebound this turn. Oh, fair enough, yeah. So I don't even need to... And my initiate only has three health, so he could have killed him without any boosts. Uh, he would use your, your, your smithy, but your smithy does three against my tick. Uh, shadow cast does three plus six. Wow. So, okay, I think. So I guess my command is going to be. Oh, sorry, I, I haven't to even sort of figure out how much command I've got. Uh, three, three from the fairy command and two from the banner. So five command. Oh. Was, um, So, so, hmm. so my, my fly trap, which has ranged this turn? It sure uh, does. So it can shoot up to three away from itself. Up, up to three and um, fairly simple side rules. It's short path. Yep. Shortest path, not through a forest. Into a forest, but not through it, and not through an enemy to target an enemy behind them. They body block. So you can shoot through your own troops, no problem. Bye bye. And then I'll turn the card sideways because I can't redeploy him on my next turn. Okay, so that's uh, two of my three, so I guess I will. Uh, sorry, two of my two. Of my uh, and so. I guess I haven't yet brought up my Aha Templar. So I shall do that. Um, so I don't have a um I don't have a model for the hard temper. You don't have a what? A mo a model for it, I just have a blue dot. Uh what if I move it around? Uh I'm just for some reason I seem to be completely Interesting. I see the model for it. Here, how about I do one of these things where I clone it and make another one? Can you see yeah, the new I, one? No, I think it's I think it's a, a local file um, corruption. Oh, interesting. Does it still let you move the dot around? I, I can't. Can't actually click on it. Unfortunately, so what I'll do is I might just put another object. Um, so let me go to the component list here and just find a default component for you. Here, have a pawn. Perfect. 
There we go. Fantastic. <laughs> Not exactly the <laughs> normal Arha Templar, but there's a thing. Well, he's a pretty beefy dude, right? So, he know. is. He is absolutely the slay master of slaying. Okay. And there. Uh, Still and have six to spend. Still have six to spend. Um, yeah. Master Dark, Master Dark is just too good to be on the table. And then hopefully you have the I, money for him. I, I absolutely have the luck. Really disappointing if I didn't. I can command, uh, I can command him now. He comes in to. Yep, you can command him and one other champion for free since you bought him this turn. Okay, so I guess. Oh, okay, there we go. So I can move. Um, hmm. Maybe we move things to there. So, so champions, champions come into the champions row, I can... Yeah, champions go into this champion row when you acquire them. Oh, when you acquire them, okay, right. They go straight to play. Gosh, that seems ridiculously powerful. Ridiculously so, absolutely. <laughs> and then you get to move, like, your Ascara or Flytrap or something else as well for free. Yeah. Oh, I can actually, and my Ascara has ranged this turn, so I can actually run up and pop your cultist as well. The life, the flytrap has range, the Ascara doesn't. Oh, sorry, the flytrap has range, yeah, okay, so I can't do that. Um, although I could move my Ascara. Although I do have something I'm going to have to point out to the developers as a question I've never considered. So the Ascara of Fate has the, if you play an Enlightened card, you can command it for free. And you just purchased an Enlightened Champion, which goes straight to play. I do not yeah. believe that counts as playing it, because it never, like, came from your hand to the table. Yeah. But that needs clarified. That would, that would be way too much. It feels like... <laughs> hey, activate your whole forces for free, because you happen to have this card. Well, then you've been able to... You've been able to... Um, I'm gonna do... And you also ignore forest penalties, so you could like move that Ascara straight up for a treasure if you wanted that instead of points. Or keep getting your fly oh. trap into the fray. That's true. Um, you have a lot of options with this particular yeah, turn. It's not really what I've wanted you to do, because those are really good. Yeah, they seem they seem to be um although the ones I seem to pick up are certainly less powerful than some I've seen in, in play. They make big swings happen. Yeah, I guess it's a difference between being a and not which seem Okay. Um Alrighty. So, I did not draw either of the really cool cards I wanted from my deck, so what I have are three to spend and five power to command. With my three to spend, I'm taking a quick look through this row here, and I'm going to buy another Innovative Aspirant for one of it. And there is absolutely no reason I am not taking that Void Rager. And then the Conduit Monk shows up, of course. Um, Alright, so I have five power to work with. And I need to make this power work for me. Alright, how much defense does your Runic Lycan throw path? He has six. So a Hadron Smithy and a Shadowcaster are enough to kill him. So I think that's what I'm going to do. In fact, I'm going to do it in the funniest way I can. I'm going to walk around the Runic Lycanthrope, and then when the Hadron Smithy hits him for three, I can move enemy champions up to two spaces away. Boom, boom. I'm going to knock him straight into the Shadowcaster, who's ranged anyway. 
Okie dokie. Um, so at this point, I think I'm... Uh-oh. All right. Uh, you should actually wait until I do lethal damage with the shadow caster. Otherwise, I'll probably just change my plan. Oh, sorry. The, you, in, you, you could, in principle, run away with your shadow cast. Yeah. And yeah, okay. I'm not going to, so just... You haven't done that yet. Okay. Now my shadow caster activates and does its attack before its move. It hits him for three, which would be lethal. Okay. Now you play your treasure. Play my treasure. Dude. And make it non-lethal. And then I have to decide if I want to play one of my treasures to make it lethal again. <laughs> or if I leave one of your guys rampaging around in my back lines. And I'm not going to waste my treasure on it at this moment. So instead, I'm just going to have my shadow caster run away. <laughs> but it's annoying because I think I could have picked something else off if I had activated elsewhere. I'm going to have the shadow caster run this direction. Okay. And I purchased, I used my power, my turn is complete, and now my Hadron Initiate is reset for the next turn. I have four command, three purchase. Um, use my or to uh, although we'll take pull them together uh, three and four seven you don't smith is okay so I'll try that uh, one Sorry, so I suppose I should say I do damage with my Ascara of Fate. No worries. He hit me for four, I've got three uh, left. Four. And you know, you to to one with my final two command and there's another three. Bye bye, Smithy. Um, and then my purchase. be doing quite well with the purchasing found hero strategy at the moment, so I think I'll continue with that. Oh, 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 ambush. Wow, gosh. Yeah, it is. That's, uh, hmm, well, that's a powerful card. Really I'm <laughs> rather wishing I hadn't revealed that for you. <laughs> I rather wish I had runes in my deck to buy it. <laughs> and that is... Alright, so I've got... I'm going to hit play all here. I've got a lot of fun stuff to work with. I've got four to spend, two free cultist commands, four power to work with, and I can boost the mobility, damage, and defense of one of my units quite a bit. So I have to decide... Which one do I want to boost and where do I want to send them? 
If I were to do it to the bringer of despair and use all my power on him, one, two, three, four, and five movement would be enough to get into this runic lycanthrope's face. So I'm considering that, and he would make all of my stuff get big power, including my cultists, but my cultists aren't going to actually reach anything. I'm also considering the Mechana Initiate, because the Mechana Initiate will get such a big movement boost that he can get all the way to the center shrine this turn. Of course, the Mechana Initiate's going to have plus two, so he's going to have five movement regardless, just because I'm going to be playing Mechana cards. One, two, three, four, five. Is five power enough to kill one of these things? It is enough to kill the Ascara. Alright. That means I basically have to do it to the... Shadowcaster couldn't kill. Cultist can't be equipped. My smithy is down. I don't have enough units! At least I don't have enough power to do both of the things I'd like to do. Okay. Dun 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 dun. Sorry, I'm making a little bit more decision making than I maybe need to do here. Well, no, this is this is your uh, this is your big turn. I had my big turn a couple ago, so when all of the cards I'd purchased came in in one. Any ambush effects that can save me. I can command a champion a second time. That's that's what I need. That Void Drift Stalker can do what I need to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the Rocket Courier to the Mechan Initiate and hit you to stick that underneath. He now has plus two movement from himself, plus two movement from the Construct, and three normal, so he can move up to seven spaces. And then the Mechan Initiate's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And he has 7 power right now, so he's going to smack down your Runic Lycanthrope. Mm -hmm. Anything to defend against that, or he's all gone? No, he's gone. Alright, then I'm going to purchase the Void Drift Stalker, which will allow me to command a champion a second time. And I am going to command this Mechana Initiate with my remaining two power and have him immediately smack down the Ascara of Fate. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Alrighty, and now since I did my attack first, I can either choose to keep the point in the middle or go grab one of these treasure. And I actually highly value these treasure, so I'm going to go do that and get that one off the board and find out what I've got to work with. Now I just have two free cultist commands left. So my first free cultist command, I'm going to make this guy step up here into that corner. My second free cultist command, I'm going to bring a new one onto the board and start them towards the center. Once again, I don't have the cultist models. So these, uh... these are just dots for you. <laughs> Yeah, these are just these are just little yellow dots for me. <laughs> nice. That's basically it's what they bad. are anyway. They're just yellow yeah, little yellow dots. To be honest. I feel, I feel less bad about that. Our hard tempo, which is yes, because he's thing. actually pretty spectacular. We'll have to do something about that after this game. Yeah, I, I've tried. I've tried reloading the mod for times and stripping out things, but for some reason. Do you remember that initiative is currently got a 50 
Five? I've got five defense with him currently. Which unfortunately means if you equip Master Dartha with the Snapdragon, he'll have five attack. Uh, yeah. Also, I guess don't ignore the Arha Templar because he lets you command something else for free and he's got nine attack on his own. The fact that forests don't really bother you means you could easily jump the Arha in. So we have five, five command anyway. Um, by a mecha initiate yeah. which means the construct gets unequipped goes back to my discard pile if I can get it to separate uh, and so that three of my five commands uh, and I guess a freebie and we are templar command number of machines are free the Flash Witch seems to be stuck at the back and she's an exclusive one to move and I have played this thing so she now has range, although can't actually reach anything. You can actually, because you can go one, two, three straight into this forest and be exactly three from my shadow caster. Like in, in forest doesn't but you can't shoot through the forest, which is the real killer. Yeah, okay. You can get just to the edge of range, but with an obstacle in the way, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, what let you command her for free? Uh, the aha. Uh -huh. Oh, that's right, uh, the, the slay uh, bonus. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which is exactly what you do with it. I think those two are set up for that one-two combo. Arha does his yeah. thing, Flytrap moves in behind. Yeah, and it's just can't reach the range, range this, uh, this turn. So my... Uh, I also can find something to do. Snapdragon... Heroes. Hero, there we go. Oh, conduit not keeps thinking. But I'm also a sucker for and plus two card things. Who do I want this on? I guess I want this on... Let's put it, let's pop it on the watch right witch. Okay, and then hit U to stick it underneath. Underneath, there we go. So, I'm at five, three. Um, ultimate, and it does a construct. Can't do that. Conduit mark. Mighty champion for your mighty champion. Way too good for you. I don't know you have that, so I think I should. I've never got to use my bringer, but I sure want to. <laughs> and I 
think I is it two I still have or three? So you commanded the Ascara or sorry, the Arha Templar with three of your power, so you have two natural Ooh. power left. And you Which have not moved your Master Dartha yet either. But I don't need any command to move Master Dartha anyway. Yep. So basically you've got a cultist and a Dartha left because you don't have anything else that can be commanded for two. Okay. Uh, so I'll move Master Dartha into the center and see if I can pick up a cultist. I put some mm-hmm. pawns there in case you need oh. to use those. Well, <laughs> some kings these rather. Pretty, yeah, these are pretty beefy, beefy cultists. <laughs> we can make him feel like a less beefy cultist. Oh, there, there we go, perfect. Okay. Nice. Uh, yeah. uh, and then I have five to buy. Did you ever use the command to champion for free from Conduit Monk? I did. I used that to command the flight. You use the Arhas free command. But when you acquired the Conduit Monk, it also commands one. Oh my goodness, okay. So, I I, you can I just, get... I think like, literally run out of champions command that all had there. Well, have another cultist then. Um... Cultist champions? Cultist or champions. Oh, okay. So ch- champion just refers to anything that has a on the board. Yes, and I'm going to put that on my list to double check. We've been playing it that they're champions, um, but their card doesn't actually say the word champion. I'll yeah. put that on the list to double check with later, but we've been commanding them with the free things. They might be a special case, but we'll go with it. Okay, thank you. And three, sorry, five to spend. Yep. And I should find that. Draw two cards. Feels like, I don't know, not really having any sense of how this game can. It feels like it's getting a little late for me to be uh, trying to banish my deck in a meaningful way. Although, the ambush banishes are the only ones that are really worthwhile at this point because they're instant and done. The shade is definitely not going to be worth it. So that's basically the best spot in the world, pretty much. It's actually, I can afford both the foraging and the S and the. Um, both of them, let me get rid of two apprentices. They're just straight upgrades on them. Yeah. Actually, the Spiteful Gladiator is a pretty great upgrade, going from one useless rune to three power for commanding. And actually, both of those, the, the two that those runes would be as much origin for two runes. Yep. Very nice. Oh, excellent! And the scripting automatically flips the uh, flips suspension. Sure does. Alrighty, so I'm gonna hit play all here. I've got some power, and I've got some runes, and that's about what I've got. And unfortunately I can't do everything in the world I want this turn, but I can do a couple of good things. Which one do I want to do the most? I think what I want to do the most is put my Bringer of Despair onto the board. So one, two, three. That used four of my five power, which means the other one's basically dead. But then I'm going to spend one rune on this Verdant Elemental, which will let me command a cultist for free. 
This cultist is now a big beefy monster because he got plus five from Bringer. And he's going to walk up and smack down your flytrap. Wait, flytrap's equipped, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, fly Never mind. Is Disregard. There's no reason to try to <laughs> smack him with the cultist freebie, which means the bringer probably wasn't what I needed to do. Um, which free cultist move would I like instead? I would still like this... Well, no, I don't want to put him in range of Arha, or he'll just kill the cultist to get stuff. You know what? Army of cultists. I'm going to put another cultist on the board. <laughs> and then I have two runes left to spend. And this Amethyst Defender, there's no reason for me not to want that. Other than flipping something like that. So that's really what I want. Cultist spam. Well, that's, that's more or less perfect. Alrighty, and then since Springer sucked down all my power, that's all I can accomplish. So you are racing ahead in the area of control. Only a little bit, to be honest. It swings pretty big in the end. So are we are we doing ten or fifteen? It's fifteen. Okay. The start scenario is fifteen, and it's relatively abrupt. The later scenarios will have longer game paths where these banish cards and stuff matter a whole lot more. And you you tend to find this, this sort of linear sort of acquisition of points, or does it they vary quite a lot in terms of? I've seen quite a few games where someone was rushing up that honor pool and then one massive turn sent their champions back and they had all their power but they had nothing to even put out except for cultists and then they never recovered. Right. Just that one turn of I wiped three of your four main champions, good luck. hard to get back in there and then they just rack up points three at a time three at a time it's only two at a time but boom i've already hit the cap yeah because i guess it takes it, it, effect, it takes at least a couple of you know, two, two or three turns to get to get to the sort of um, control points on the wing the yep board. and they if they have enough champions in the center they can just send someone forward to smack you down before you reach it while leaving someone to collect that point. Yeah. Uh, okay, so my, I'm if I have an equipped champion for a card, I have You sure equipped. do, so plus one card. Uh, my round. So, uh, if you... So that's what, six to spend then? Six to spend and three commands. Three commands. Might I recommend the Ultimec to get that ambush treasure right away? Maybe it'll change your decisions. Sorry, the Ultimec ambush and treasure. I mean, there are several ambush effects out there that are solid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Seer of the Full Path again is a... Uh, it's spectacular for me, that's for sure. Yeah, and so whether I... Whether I try and get him in this... So even up the number of cultists, maybe. Nah, I'm going to just let's take this Ultimec and doing the amateur thing of using all of my points rather than 
trying to figure out what's best. Um, and the Amshak has been a treasure set. My treasures from is there a treasure a treasure bag? You sure do. Just hit one on that treasure bag or just like that. That works as well. Okay. Stick it in your hand, flip it, and see what you end up with. Just as a note, the draw is much safer because if you move things around just awkwardly enough in tabletop, it will sometimes flash information to your opponent just briefly. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. It's not much of a thing, and it didn't happen here because it was still face down, but... I had seven, uh, seven commands for the rock tier. But, um, hmm, feels like. Uh, the life round card is. Which has range. So, the life round card is. has ranged and is. seven. Shadow My shadow caster is pretty weak. He's only got four. Yeah. Since your flytrap witch has what ten defense, that's a pretty big hike up from three. I would need help to kill him. Even if my bringer yeah. gave him a plus five, I'd still need help. I think that's what I would do is kill the cultist. It's possible treasure could fix my issue, but it also gets treasure off the board. I'll get it. Bye bye, cultist. <laughs> bye bye, yellow dot. Uh, so that was. Does he have a bonus movement? Oh uh, yeah, from the, from the um, Got it. Yeah. Uh, and, um, so that's a nine attack against a yeah. eight defense. Yeah. I would like to use a plus two defense on that. This is. Am I still dead, or is that good? That, I think, is good. Woohoo! Oh, hang on, sorry, no. Um, you don't need to play that. Uh, if you have... Uh, if you acquire... Oh, no, okay. Okay, okay. No, you're good. He's, he's still alive. Alright. And, and... So, if you didn't kill anything, that is me out of... out of command. I think that is over to you. Alright. 
Well, you still mess things up by moving that Arha Templar. I'm not gonna lie, I had this beautiful plan of moving something all the way in between your Dartha and your Templar, giving it double attack and killing them both. <laughs> that would have been disappointing. I can still do part of it, but I can't kill both of them because I only get one movement even though I get two attacks. Right. And then um, those two directed against the same it's the same. Actually, no, it's just two attack actions. As long as he's in a position, like he can attack, move, then attack. Oh, and okay. Double so attack's a little bit better than that. It's not just hit twice. Yeah, it, so sorry, it's, it's you can hit twice, but you can also move, hit, move. Or... Not move, hit, move. Hit, move, move. Or hit, move, hit. hit. You get two attacks. You can move and then hit twice, which is what I was going to do when they were both next to it. Or I could hit now and then move, but I, unfortunately, with the hand I have here, let me just hit play all so you can see. I have this cool, my equipped champions have plus one movement, give a champion plus one move and double attack, and I have a plus four um, strength here with the slay draw a card i was going to get some super draws off it but i don't have four power so i can't do it with the bringer i literally only have two power since i haven't played a void card this turn which means i need to decide which thing is most important to me your arha is super scary over in my face i kind of want him to go away but I have enough movement if I equip the Mechana Initiate that I can run him all the way into the center. And that doesn't exactly suck. I also have enough, I think. Let me see. So Mech Initiate has three, four, five, because I've played a mech card. Six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He can't quite reach the fly trap. He can get to the shrine, he just can't reach the witch. Um, alrighty. So, first things first, let's equip my Mechan Initiate with the thing. Uh, my Innovative makes him have plus one movement. And there's really no reason not to. My Void Rager is going to give him another movement and a double attack. Then this pathetic, should be terrible mech and initiate is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, right onto the shrine itself and smack Master Dartha for a grand total of 9 times 2. It is absolutely nothing to do that. Bye bye, Master Dartha. Alrighty, and then that was a slay for the dragon's eye, so I get to draw one card and then play it. Oh look, my champions are faster again, but I still have no more power to work with. But it does give me six runes. Six runes doesn't completely suck. Didn't quite make it to, to here. I think command two cultists for free. Those cultists have no power boost this turn, so they'd just be two damage effectively. That's not going to bring down the Arha Templar. He's too beefy. Okay, I'm going to acquire the Seer of the Fork Path for four of my six. And that'll let me command two cultists for free. One of them, I'm just going to put into the center kind of as a make sure I get this point. The second one, I'm also going to send towards the center, just kind of to muck up the center and make it more difficult to get to my guys. Then I have two runes left to spend. And there's no reason not to use the Flourishing Druidus because it does upgrade my thing and it is an acquirer or a life bound for your triggers. So goodbye, Apprentice.
Why is this thing not dropping in? Toggle, custom, state, something. I don't know. Why is mine not working? I'll throw it in your void. Yours worked. I have used all of my power. I've used all of that. I've used all of that. There is nothing else I can accomplish, so in turn. Go right ahead. my treasure chip ready. I mean, um, I said nothing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't mind me. Well, the the Aha Templar is dead if I don't get rid of the Shadowbringers. Um, so I think with, with my full command, I will try and kill or bring it to spare. It is successful. I have no defense and I have no strike back. Which means you get to command somebody else for free. So, so, so I, I can still move? You can still my... move him. You did your attack, you can still move him after. Uh, so what's this Mechaner initiate? He's pretty heavily... Uh, heavily um, he's nine and... He's a nine... Nine seven. Yeah, okay. I think I can do that. Right. Ooh, there is something good about that. I can buy the line. Choose an enemy champion and destroy all constructs equipped to it. I think I will use the ambush. I think I will definitely take that three of my Alright. Yeah. So let me move the initiate to the side. My dragon's eye goes away. All right. With the move, um, now it looks like space. He's doing five against. Well, that actually, with the cultists in play, I understand what the cultists do there. Hmm. So I want to run away. They're, they're pretty pathetic, they're cannon fodder. Unless you can boost them a bunch. <laughs> or unless I accidentally skip. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll move this guy here and the bird won't, won't actually eat. Alrighty. So I might be able to die. And so, so that, now hard time to get he defeated. He's the champion, so I can't another champion. Three. Ha. <sighs> Now my flash witch. It could smack down my shadow caster if it wanted to. Uh, range uh, against the shadow casters for sales. What sort of units do the tokens come in? Do they plus two or plus five? Is that the? Um, there's here. So right click on the treasures thing and hit search. And then we'll just start seeing, can I flip these over? Yeah. I don't want it in the search bar. Oh, this is annoying. I didn't think it's changed. 
Okay. I've never actually looked through them. There are some fives in there. There's a seven in there. Oh, we've got okay. So they have a pretty wide range from like two to seven. Right. Okay, so I think I'll just take you. Take aim at your shit and then I'll hit shuffle on that bag just so we don't know what's coming. All right, so you're gonna use your attack first. That is absolutely lethal to my shadowcaster, and I apparently knocked a cultist over with it. Where was my cultist? Oh, he was right here in the center. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. Okay, so the physics engine of recalling people. Sometimes you are like, oh. I'm oh. <laughs> flight which slow. I wish to feed some enemy champion for cards. Oh, so. oh. Plus one, so I'm now up to. So I spent three of six in my tablets. Four remaining. Four left to spend. Deal Weaver. Oh, no, no, that's your second. That's. I. I've already got two cards in my deck, so that would be in play. If I were you, I'd take the draw. Yeah. It's Either that, or actually, you could consider just two heavy infantry so you can command more. We're at the command to win stage of the game. We're not at the deck stage of the game anymore. I see. Okay. Yeah, I'm sort of. Um, yeah, sort of. I guess I've been neglecting that. And yeah, yeah, I do have to. Yeah, maybe a couple of those would be in order. Even. That's really not a bad plan at all. I normally start spamming heavy infantry towards the end. I don't know, it just feels a bit late in the late in the game to be fighting silver. Maybe. So, I still control the center because I have a cultist and the mech initiate. I still control the bottom, but you completely wipe me out of this side one. I only have one champion not on the board that is commandable this turn, like Hadrian Smithy. Uh, my order of operations on my cards matter. I'm going to put them down, but I'm using my runes first. Because I can spend two from the thicket and one from the apprentice to buy a shade of the black watch. And now my void drift stalker has an extra power from the void card in my discard pile. And then I have three, four, five, six power and one rune left. They actually did flip a one rune guy, the Starfinder Compass. And my deck is very much about construct, so I will acquire that. And then my six power, I can use the Mech Initiate, I can use the Hadron Smithy, and then I can use a Cultist. How do I wish to do it? So the Mech Initiate can do five damage to the Templar, which puts me one off of killing him. 
my smithy can come start running up to your flytrap, but your flytrap actually has seven power because of the construct, which is absolutely terrifying to just smack him down from range before he gets there. That's fun. I think we are at the part of the game where this is all I need to do. So I'm going to use two power on the Mech Initiate to attack the um, Arha Templar, and I'm going to go ahead and use this for a plus three. And so what damage is that doing? So that is doing eight damage to his six health. Okay. Not doing anything about it. All right, Templar is back. Turn the card. Solid. All right, now my Mech Initiate could still move with this. Um, I'm debating about it. Do you have any treasure in your hand? You have one treasure in your hand. One, two, three. One, two. If I put him a little closer... Now I'm going to keep him right in the center. <laughs> I doubt you have a plus three movement, but if you do, by all means, come blast me and make me cry. <laughs> My Hadron Smithy, if I come up this way, same issue, but if you were to move the flytrap far enough to get in ranged kill, you'd pick him off and draw a card, but you wouldn't get your point for the shrine, and I think that's more important to you, so I can let him go up the side. And then my last two powers for a cultist. And I will have a cultist start going to the... Uh, I don't know. Having him gang up on that flytrap does sound fun, but I'm going to have him go to the right. Yeah. My... Everything spent, right. all done. Okay. I have... I played a fairy commander. My champions are not spelled horses. Flytrap has rain. And seven. And an initial. And three and no constructs. So I think I'm just going to have to get that middle, even if it means. Uh-oh, somebody's getting sniped. Yeah. It has to be this guy in the middle. Um, so that's black hole which is ranged. Uh, I like that. Okay. Seven. Two. Plenty, and I don't have any <laughs> treasure left. needed to happen. That was my... Did you take your draw for the slay effect? Slip up every not Uh, and that's a thing. Um... Alright, so that leaves you with five power. Three... And two runes? Three. From the so I see six, seven, eight, nine, and you spent four on flytrap, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. I'm, um, I'm confusing the ambush effect on fairy commander with the effect. No worries. So you've got five power left to work with and two runes. Two. And the two runes is a heavy or nothing.
Yeah, it looks... It's... What I mean? Which might take heavy infantry and... Five... Hmm... Absolutely a cyclone merchant. I'm just gonna move... Champions are not slowed by four. So I can at least... Center line. Move by. That's not nice. Uh, um, Cultist surprise. Then do I bring up two remaining hay? Is that right? Feels like I need some more of my. Alrighty. Well, with this hand, the first thing I absolutely have to do is equip my Hadron Smithy with the Rocket mm. Courier to give him more movement. I'm also going to use the Void Rager on the Hadron Smithy to give him yet another movement and double attack. Yeah. So the Hadron Smithy can run all the way up to this shrine and attack your flytrap witch. He has five damage times two, which I believe is exact change unless you have a defense. I, I think it was no! <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't, it wasn't enough to save my uh, to save my whoever it was last. Time. Okay, I have a way around this. It's not how I wanted to do this turn, but. After Hadron Smithy attacks, he can move each enemy champion adjacent to him up to two spaces. So I'm going to bump this guy two towards the center. Because now he effectively has two life from your defense. And I will use my Earth Elemental Command Occultist for free. <laughs> and the Cultist will deal two damage to the Flytrap Witch. <laughs> Cultist power! <laughs> and so the construct is lost. Correct. Uh, construct goes back to discard pile, and then someday we'll maybe come back, but the game's probably going to end by then because I'm getting three yeah, points I mean, a turn. That, that is the last I will be seeing. This. And then I have one, two, three, four, five to spend. Are there any ambush effects out here that are worth having? And the short answer is no. I'll get this wild bark just to take that ambush effect away. I won't even bother with the heavy infantry because I just have to end my turn next turn. You don't have enough mobility. And end my turn. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I think it's fairly clear I'm not scoring a point. Like, you can potentially get a point if you run your runic up to the center, pop my cultist, and then have control of the middle. But I need to get one point and I control all three zones. So I would say that's probably the end of that. Yeah. And I'm certainly not doing with, with a hand that consists of two apprentices, a militia, a heavy infantry. Yep. Well, <coughs> that was a fun game. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I, I think I'm uh, I'm new to a lot of this technology, so um, keeping track of everything that's going on on the screen is um, quite hard. I mean, so it's, it's hard to get um, like a really sort of detailed feel for just sort of the, the sort of tightness of the mechanics, which is something that just blew me away with um, Shards of Infinity was how just tight. tight crafted a game that was and how um, how at the sort of mid to end game it becomes puzzling through to figure out what your win condition is and how to make it happen uh, but this I'm, I mean this looks great the art looks lovely uh, from a sort of again this this really applies only to the this implementation on tabletop simulator is it, it might be sort of helpful to have if you mouse over a um, a mini to actually see what its stats are rather than shuffle backwards and forwards. Yeah, one of the guys is working on coding that mod. 
Yeah, I mean this this is obviously uh, this is obviously like those exist because people use them for Gloomhaven and stuff, and it's really important and stuff like that to have all your stats on the mini itself. Yeah, but I mean, like, like it, it, it's sort of interesting to think about how that that would sort of uh, um, in a on the on the table kind of context because. Yeah, you definitely on the table have to be very vocal with each other about reminding each other what something is. Like, at least once I started to run up and smack your flytrap, I'm like, wait a minute, he has plus four defense from that construct. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's one of those things that, like, if it's a tournament, you're going to go, no, haha, -ha, you failed. And yeah. if it's anything else, you're going to be like, no, 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 no problem. There's no reason you would do that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, it's sort of, I, I guess it's a bit of a, it's a bit double-edged sword because you almost I mean, the, he's on the sort of look beautiful and it, it really sort of adds to the feel of the game but in some sense you almost want like the cards to be stand up on so you can see what the, the sort of mechanics of the i actually yeah. think one of the early physical prototypes was sticking a card on like a little stand yeah yeah and then but that's obviously. before they had minis and the minis are a big draw so yeah and then and then obviously like when you apply a construct to it, what does you know what does that look like? And it becomes a bit sort of unwieldy. Especially so, since they can acquire multiple constructs on the same guy, and the mechanas sometimes like to really beef one guy, like that doubling construct. Oh my yeah, gosh! You you huge, stack yeah. one guy up and then double at the end effect of it, and you have one unstoppable monster. Yeah. That just steamrolls yeah. forever. It feels like sort of how that played out was, uh, you know, we, we were sort of competing in terms of the amount of stuff on the board. I was I was sort of, that, that sort of, you, I guess your right lane control point was just a sort of steady source of points that I wasn't competing at all and I was at best 50-50 on the other control points, so. If yeah, you was, uh, search my deck, the one thing you'll notice is I took every card I saw with movement. So I've got several innovative aspirants, I've got a Void Rager, I've got this construct that gives me plus two movement, I already had a Mechana Initiate that gets movement for being play Mechana cards. Yeah. That, to me, I think is one of the biggest things, because you knock me off of a zone, you should have it for like one more turn at least, and I just zoom right back out. Yeah, because you've got the movement, you can go up there quickly again, and it's a difference in some cases between. It's an entire board. turn of advantage, quite frequently. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's something that I guess you know you don't you don't have in a, that sort of. This game yeah. was also the least I've ever used Bringer of Despair as the yellow player. Yes, as I you know I've been reading the Discord chat and everyone's saying how yes that's way overpowered and you it's know, either it's, way overpowered or way useless. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's well costed because of that. It's either completely useless. I got one use of it this game. And to be honest, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't. It won the board and so it was. I was intending with my free cultist rush cards that I was going to move the bringer one time and then just move this army of cultists that are seven one slaying machines. Yes. That's what I was intending to do with my yeah. game plan, but it never really panned out. But no, I mean it's again it, that's something, something that's I found found so sort of interesting with shards is you've got this constantly changing state. It's not like a dominion where you've got you know you know what you've got to play with, and it's sort of there is probably an optimum deck, and um, it's about how you get there, knowing that. And this is so basically you can do with what you what you've got. This mod I just loaded in real fast, I don't know if it's showing to you yet, is an earlier version of this, but it has this champion draft and all 32 champion figures. Um, so yeah. we have a lot more cool things than what's just in the demo version. And when the Nihil Bomber attacks, you can have him attack all champions within three. Um, Enlightened Militia. You, you just got a lot of cool stuff, so you can, like, this 4-1 Mechana Militia... But it has strike back, so if you buff its attack, it becomes a oh, I don't want to hit it. Yeah. I have to, but ah. Uh. Yeah. So, 
there's a lot of cool mm. stuff coming. I probably should load out of this very quickly because technically I think that stuff's all under NDA still. Fair enough, yeah. I mean, the, the, the one thing I see is that um, I've been watching the uh, team Tottenham um, some playthroughs that they've been doing in lockdown. Um, and they've been playing Sky, Sky, Sky Tier, Sky Tier. Um, and I guess that's a sort of, it's deck building, but the deck building is a fair side of the, the play, and this is the deck building within the play kind of, um, kind of set up. Uh, but again, sort of, sort of similar-ish ideas of, um, you know, area control and what have you. Yeah, this is, this is just, it's been really, really interesting to see this on the, the virtual tabletop and, uh, all right. Well, I'm going to move 